Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tour de Hype. Animations and responsive web design usually don't get along together very well. One of the biggest advantages of Tumult Hype, however, is to provide responsive features on board. This allows you not only to create flexible animations that scale with the containing element, but also create independent layout variations for different viewport sizes right in the tool to make the best use of the available space. So today I want to show you a simple example of how to use this feature for creating an adaptive hero element. Here we go. So what I mean by talking about adaptive layouts is to create layout variations that adapt to different viewport sizes. That means using the space in the best possible way and serving different layout variations depending on the screen size that we have. Uh, this, the display size that we have. So um, starting with the largest version right now where we've got a lot of space, um, I can quickly rerun this animation. You see that we've got uh, different views for the character and we've got different callouts. We've got some um, assets in the background to really use this space. But whenever it gets more dense, so um, using this kind of break point right here, um, whenever uh, we got only a smaller um, portion of the display ready, um, you see that the character is now on the left-hand side and the entire intro um, animation is uh, being skipped. And we have just have the final callout, but in a very large um, kind of way to really focus on that. And whenever the space gets even more dense, um, we, we use less words here, uh, a smaller uh, a smaller callout and uh, using the space, um, making sure that every but everything is visible even on the smallest screen size. So, how do we do that in Tumult Hype? Um, the good thing here is that uh, Tumult Hype already comes with a very um, matured um, a variation of uh, flexible layouts and um, we can really use the features here within the tool to make sure to leverage this kind of layout variations. In order to do that, um, once you've got one scene created, um, you can add different layouts by using this layouts panel here. Um, and I already defined uh, three different layouts in here. So for my kind of project that I've created for this uh, sample, um, three variations as you've seen in the browser are totally fine. But whenever you feel uh, the need to create more than two or three um, flexible uh, different layouts, um, you can al always add new ones, um, setting a breakpoint width or using predefined um, screen sizes, although I would recommend um, not being too much focused on the predefined versions. I mean, it's a good starting point, but usually in responsive uh, context, rather make sure to um, start from the design perspective and not from the device perspective. So make sure that everything works in, uh, in the best possible way and only if your content actually breaks, uh, then you can use a breakpoint to uh, serve different layout variations and to make sure that everything in between these layout breakpoints, so um, from 320 pixels to 580 pixels, so it's a um, minimum set um, uh, breakpoint pixel here. Um, you can um, uh, quickly define how this entire content should behave uh, within. So apart from creating these kind of layout variations, each can be then uh, defined individually. Um, you should opt for the scaling part to make sure that it's flexible within the adaptive layout containers. And uh, then you can define uh, how the different elements should uh, behave in that context. Um, for instance, um, I usually create a group for all the elements that belong together. can show you real quick. It's pretty much everything in here. I've contained inside a group. Why did I do that? It's pretty simple. I can use uh, the metrics panel over here to define um, the flexible layout 
uh, behavior. And um, I can do that for every element on its own. But if I use a container, I will make sure um, using these pins, for instance, that uh, as you can see in the preview next to it, that this entire group, this all the elements in between are moved um, always accordingly next to each other in the middle of the browser window. Um, of course, it depends on the kind of layout that you have. Maybe you want to element an element that would always stick to the left hand side and a logo or something like that and then you would uh, place it outside a group and just have it fixed on the left side left hand side or you can have it fixed on the right hand side i think you get the picture um, you can also um, add a scaling behavior using these arrows um, that will then allow you to stretch the content or to make sure that it's um, these two shrink to fit or expand to full are pretty, um, pretty similar to what you have with CSS background position with um, contain or cover. So in this case, the entire area will always be uh, filled with uh, the elements that you have here. And um, this one will always make sure that everything is visible. Uh, preserving the aspect ratio with a simple stretch, it will just get stretched and uh, to fill all the entire space, but not uh, using the aspect ratio. For this project right here, uh, we don't want to um, scale the content. We just want to have the um, negative space added on the left hand side and on the right hand side. All right, I just wanted to show you the options so that you can decide on your own. So. Um, yeah, this already leaves you quite a good impression. Uh, everything in between here is uh, straightforward animations going on. And um, I can quickly go through the different layout variations. You can see here um, different animations using the same character over and over again. Also here, the good thing uh, using scalable vector graphics um, allows me to really scale it up. But as you can see, as you have seen in the, um, in the preview before in the browser, it will always look crisp thanks to SVGs. If you want to know how to uh, animate such a character, um, take a look at one of the previous samples where I've been more talking about that in detail. Um, not tapping into that topic right now since we were focusing on creating different layout variations. All right, um, here again, um, or in this case, I didn't use a container for everything, making sure um, that the space is being used properly. So um, the character and the callout will not be moved together when the, um, when the browser window is uh, being uh, increased or decreased but making sure that they both are uh, positioned to the left and to the right hand side um, appropriately. So in this case, I've aligned everything um, the way it should be, leaving the closest one. It's fairly easy, again, using a group here, um, because I don't want them to uh, move that far apart in this case, um, with the poster image just being uh, position to the right hand side as you can see in the preview it will always stick to that part and moving a little bit further or um, closer to the character um, yeah I think this is pretty much it um, feel free to play around with it a little bit um, make sure to really tap into these different options um, it's the good thing that you always can use the preview to get an impression of what you're doing here um, and uh, feel free to, to use this sample as a starting point, maybe exchange the assets. You can also use these assets, of course, as in all the templates uh, that we've been providing. Um, if you have any questions, of course, let us know. And um, yeah, uh, enjoy these responsive features and uh, looking forward to see your great um, work that you come up with. Enjoy. Of course, there's a lot more to responsive web design than simple scaling and layout variations, but it's a good starting point. Play around with the different options and settings into Multipe to get a feeling for how they affect the result in the browser. You can usually spare yourself a lot of hassle when you include responsive design thinking already in the concept phase. So that's it for today. 
download the project on twitterhype.com and check out the other videos and samples as well. Happy animating!